Hi and welcome to another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about text fields in Adobe Lifecycle. And text fields are probably the most versatile object in your object library in Adobe Lifecycle. You can do more with them than you can do any other object. And first thing I want to do is differentiate text fields from text boxes or just text objects. If you see on my form here, I've got two regular text objects, uh, the one that has the title and the one that has the website. And uh, they, they can contain text, and they can contain uh, text that, that is customized as far as fonts and size and justification and all those things can be done in a text box and in a text field as well. The, the font palette doesn't change, and the paragraph palette doesn't change. But the difference you can see down here in the object field for text fields and text boxes, you get a lot more options with text fields. And one of the first options that you get is the caption. At the user discretion, they can, there can be a caption to the side or above or below or to the right of the text field to give the user something to go on if he's entering values into a form. And that's really the difference. Um, text fields are form objects in that they can interact with the end user, whereas text boxes are not designed to do that. So if, if you want to create a field where the user can interact, you need a text field. And text boxes can be used to dress those things up, but in the end, interactivity, when we preview, as you can see when we interact with a document, fields are highlighted whereas boxes aren't. They're just labels. So if you've had any programming experience in, say, Visual Studio or something else, text boxes are more like labels. Text fields are more like text boxes in, in those other programming languages. All right, so what can you do with them? Well, of course, you can, uh, on the Layout tab, customize a lot of different things. The most uh, used one on this palette is, of course, the position of the caption. It can go below to the right, above, or it can go nowhere at all. When we drag a text field from the object library onto the, the construct here, uh, it's got default values. It's, it's Myriad Pro is a font, and the text size is 10, and there are no uh, justifications. It's left and centered into the field. Uh, one of the most important things to utilize when you're using text fields is on this field tab, the allow multiple lines and the field format. Of course, plain text is going to match exactly what font you choose and paragraph style you choose here, but rich text allows you to change those things inside the object itself. So rich text allows for at runtime some of the text being selected and turned into say underlined or bold, whereas if you don't have that rich text and you want to do the same thing, it's going to make, make it uniform throughout the whole document. So if I want to go underline, I can't because um, I have plain text only, and so whatever is set up here in the palette at design time is what happens in runtime. One of the things that text fields is meant to do is to give a place for the user to type in data into a form. And most of the time on, on forms, you're going to have a, a, a number of text fields. You're going to have to understand layout in order to make things look well for your end user. So if we had more than one text field, let's copy and paste it and make another one. If we had more than one here, and then we had one out to the right, And let's say in our text field we have the layout uh, width expand to fit. This means that as I type, I don't know how many lines of text or how far my user is going to go, and the field will grow based on user input. And the problem that creates is it starts running into my other text field to the right of it. And so I don't want that to happen. And so I have to use some intuition, some, some basic knowledge of how to lay things out in order to keep um, my user from doing too much. Another, another gotcha on 
on user entry is if even if expand to fit is not used, if I type a bunch of text out here and go mo more than one line, uh, it rolls down. But if I continue to type and add carriage returns and get past the height of my form, then I get this little plus sign down here. So there's more text down there that I can't see, and that's what that plus sign is saying. It's saying the field wasn't big enough to display all the text. And so, of course, uh, just like the width, you can also expand to fit the height. But once you do that, it's going to start growing down into your other fields. And that's where form flow comes in. Of course, that's covered in another video if you want to learn about that. But just be careful on how wide and big you make your text field. In fact, you can also set uh, a limit to visible area so they can't type past uh, such, a, such an edge that you make. So if I go preview PDF and I limit the visible area and I get to the end of it, it's not going to allow me to go any farther. That's a way to control the user so that he doesn't go past where you want him or her to type. So on, on this example, we have two text fields. One has uh, an underline underneath the text box, and one has the font set to underline, and also an underline under the box. And when you look at that, you can see how that can really cause a lot of layout and, and aesthetic problems with your form. And so you need to be careful on how you allow that. If we, if we just allow one line, we still have the problem if we use an underlined font of creating a double underline or an ugly text field. So another way to do it is to drop the field to the bottom. And that looks good for the top one, but for the second one, you still have the double underline. So you want to avoid underline, um, double underlines in your text boxes. And one way to do that is to turn it off at the design time level here so that as you type, the underline appears only once. It's also something to consider if you have a text box with no caption and you want the, the text to, to wrap around across the screen with, with an underline of text. We'll get a run on until we put allow multiple lines. And then as we type, and we run onto the edge of the page, we'll get a wrap. Of course, it, will only, it won't strand hyphenate words in mid-sentence. We still get a plus sign because we don't have the top to bottom expand to fit turned on right here. So a lot of things to consider. Expand to fit especially is something to, uh, to utilize and to leverage. Um, one more thing about text boxes is many times if you want to control the user experience uh, and allow them to, to type multiple paragraphs or multiple lines, it's best to go ahead and take the text box to the very edge of both sides of your document so that then you can control uh, margins and, and indentations inside of the text box, it's, box itself. So for example, in this, we'll put some, we'll put some sample text in here. And we have, as of right now, we have it underlined. We'll turn that off. And we have it set to the bottom right here. So let's set it to the top. And then let's make an indentation on the left of 0.5 inches, which is a half inch. And then on the right, same, 0.5 inches. Single line spacing. So now when we preview the PDF, and we were to type, much like we would in the word processor, when the paragraph wraps, it wraps exactly like we want it, with a half inch margin on each side, and a first line indent at the top line. This is much more conducive to a free-flowing text that, that needs to be entered by the end user. But for the simple uh, one or two word form field entry, the standard way it's set up is there too. Also, be careful here on currently editing. If you're in the paragraph or the font palette, this can be changed to uh, set the fonts and um, locations 
to different settings than the, the actual value of what's being typed. So for example, we're going to make our cap caption top in this one, and we're going to make our value bottom. And we'll extend this to make the example obvious. So now when we're here, we're, top, we're typing at the bottom of the text box, and the caption's here at the top. And of course, this would work um, no matter what we're doing. which orientation we choose keeps that for us. So a lot of useful tools, very versatile object, many things can be done with it. Um, like always, um, check out our other videos. We're going to do also do an advanced text field video. And so check that one out if you want to go into the more advanced features with JavaScript and things things like that. And of course be able be sure to check out the other videos on YouTube and make comments or ask questions. Also remember our website, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com for related content. And like always, remember, IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. Thank you very much. Goodbye.